Okay. Is that yours? Uh. So the next speaker is from Splunk, speaking about uh, searching some of the data we actually care about the most because we're IT people and we only get a zillion logs a day. We have Andre from Splunk. Hi. Um, so uh, I know we're running a little over, so I'll try to be quick. Um, I'm here to talk about um, Splunk and searching. I heard from Eric earlier that he has met every one of you personally, or something like that. Is there, who's, who's tried Splunk? Is there a fairly... Oh, okay. You've tried it. Okay, so well, that's different than what I was, uh, was expecting. Can I actually Maybe make a, a little comment? Sure. First? So Splunk is really awesome. I said this before. They are actually one of our corporate sponsors. So they really actively support uh, Bay Lisa um, and the community in general. They have a great website <laughs> and no, they don't pay me to say these things. Like this. Other than plenty of people that in the scope that they paid Bay Lisa to say these things. They didn't pay me to say these things. I just make it up as I go along. Indeed. Um, uh, Eric also, oh, Eric is there. Um, Eric has some shirts as well, so we have swag as uh, folks are interested in that. So I, I hadn't planned on spending much time talking about what Splunk is, but maybe I should. Yes, um, you should. The easiest easiest thing to do with, uh, to find out what Splunk is is just try it. Um, we have a demo up on uh, demo.splunk.com. Um, I wonder if I should I could just break out of the browser. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's break do it. Break out of the browser. Okay, browser it is. Do it. Just a moment. <laughs> Break up my own. Somewhere here. Firefox. Okay. Very equivalent to the IBMs these days. Yeah, they get, it's really close. Yeah, I, I know. Well, you get a blue clip. I mean, a <laughs> eraser head. It's not really in it. It's kind of in it. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel it. Oh, yeah, everyone's trying different um, eraser head I colors. Because I, like, I, I have one of these. Yeah. And then, Can you lose like, some of your... I would never buy anything else in a minute. Oh, yeah. Pop off, it might be the same now. Yeah. Let me see. Um, Pop off the racer. Yeah. I don't know if I can. So when... Uh, oh, you've got to be able to. It's yeah, going to go no matter what. Monitor, right? See, it comes right off. Let's Let, let, let me look at it. Yeah. Same mount. Yeah, exactly the same mount. So just... You can use one of the spares out of my little box. Cool. So you'll just get sued for the color violations. Uh... Splunk is a search engine for log files. Um, I think that it was born out of Eric and Rob Doss, our two founders, um, frustration, essentially, and dealing with this problem that we all face, um, which is that uh, although it would seem that parsing log files should be really straightforward, it's not. <laughs> Indeed, right? Um, both because of data volume, you um, even small websites will see things like you know, or data volumes on the order of hundreds of gigabytes a day. Um, but also because there's just so much software out there. The proliferation of open source, um, the diversity in uh, your own infrastructure often leads to um, a pretty complicated set of log files. So there's a lot of things that you might want to do. Um, uh, what I've got up here is the, um, we have an AJAX interface. Um, our guy, Nick, is, um, a, the guy is a mad genius. He does things that you really shouldn't be able to do. But um, what I'm demonstrating here is um, a server where we've uploaded some sample log files. Um, I think this one eats its own log files, right? So it, this is also kind of a, a recursive um, log file thing. So as you do queries, it, it indexes its own output. Um, so I'm showing you here is type ahead, uh, which is um, one part of the interface that lets you quickly see things like, um, you know, perhaps how many 404s you've seen um, on your site, and it, and you see what the performance is like, right? It kind of, it's very quick to um, uh, give you back an answer. Um, I didn't spend any time thinking about what queries to do, but um, I think another, um, uh, let's see, so uh, another uh, part of the interface that I think is really great is um, looking at events by time. Um, so ah. by doing, by typing 404 and by clicking a button, and now the histogram of 404 URLs over time, um, 
I can do things like narrow the time. I can see how many occurrences uh, happen in each bucket. I can click a bucket and it narrows to that time range. Um, it's kind of hard to see on the lower resolution, but the uh, we have all the rows here. Um, and there's a bit of slickness that's happening sort of under the, or behind the scenes, which is what I was planning to chat about in the um, talk. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move around in the slides uh, quickly. Um, so um, one of the things that's really really cool about Splunk. So actually, let me go back to everything. So I'm I'm gonna jump around all over now. <laughs> I've given up on trying to keep up keep the slides. Um, let me do the right thing. Um, a few of you may be familiar with a tool called Brett. <laughs> it's really cool. It's good. It does a lot of what you need. Um, but when you're when you're trying to work with big log files, so I've been in a couple of infrastructures myself. Eric was, uh, I don't know if you want to give any of your background, but he's no one cares. <laughs> he's worked with some yeah, exactly. He's worked, he's worked with some very 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 big data sets. Um, uh, oh yeah. If you've ever had to do this, um, most lots of folks have Perl or Python infrastructures, or you might use Cedric or Rock just for sort of one-off cut and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, one of the challenges is you're really, um, any of the exploration you're trying to do is really dominated by I.O. Because essentially every time you construct a new regular expression, you have to lock the entire set of data, which is really slow. Um, uh, also, when the regular expressions start getting kind of complicated, um, every so often you might make a mistake, um, and then essentially you incur the entire cost of, um, uh, of scanning the uh, data again. Uh, here's another really hard one. How do you how do you find data that's in a time range? So, um, if you have servers that are located around the world with different time zones, some of them might have time zones that change from time to time as well. Like if you have PST, PDT, you know, sometimes it's eight, eight hours offset, sometimes it's seven hours offset, depending on if it's summer or winter. Um, so, you know, when you have a problem in, in the infrastructure, you have databases, web servers, or SIP data, or whatever, um, typically there's a correlation in time, right? If the server falls over, if a DNS server falls over in one location, probably there's a cascading effect, and all that stuff's lined up in time, but it's all in different log files, they all have different timestamps, it's all very hard to kind of get to the to the root cause. So, um, so Splunk is essentially a search engine that um, takes the same approach that web search engines take to trying to understand the data that's out there on the web. If we tried um, in a web search engine, if you tried to go out to the web and say, "Hey, hey, okay, um, I've got five kinds of sites. Um, the, these are brochure aware and." Um, these are blogs, and you know these are you know sort of miscellaneous other sites. Oh, maybe um, you very very quickly better. get stymied by the the amount of variety that's out there. Um, so um, when you're designing a web search engine, you take a step back and say, "Hey, we can't do that. We have to take a an unstructured approach to designing a search engine." Um, we tried to do exactly the same thing with Splunk. Um, uh, so starting with that as the uh, the premise on which we're building, um, the the original. Prototypes um, were started something like three years, three years and two months ago, um, and uh, uh, we started um, work in earnest on our current index about a year ago, um, and that's what you see sort of running on that website. Um, uh, more recently, about five months ago, we started. Um, essentially, what, what's happened is as we've learned more about how search is done, we're tightening up the constraints and making a. Um, there's more work involved in getting a very finely crafted piece of software, right? So um, that's what we're working on now is this, this, in this latest generation. Um, so um, I think I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, there's some challenges in designing a search engine, which is for machine data, not people, uh, like not words, not things that you say. Um, uh, one is the language that they speak is different. Um, one is uh, that there's some really kind of hard to extract, but very cool data that you can get at. Um, 
Uh, the nature of, for example, a web search engine is that um, you have a huge amount of data that you'd like to crawl, and typically you do it in a very big batch, um, and then you uh, create an index that you want to get as many queries against as you can. Um, so you spend a lot of time focused on caching and distributing and um, <coughs> using lots of RAM. Uh, finally, the nature of search is different, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. By the way, if anybody has questions or comments or whatever, just feel free to shout out. Um, uh, so this is, uh, in terms of languages that machines speak versus languages that humans speak, there's sort of an interesting thing which, if you run strings against um, against various pieces of software, um, you'll find that there's some very finite numbers. And if some of them can be bigger, like MySQL. Um, uh, C++, plus plus, by the way, conflates that number. So typically the things that are only are much smaller. Um, but the number is still really small, right? You have a really limited pool of senses. If you tried to, for example, run strings on yourself, um, well, certainly the number's not, not that small. Um, <laughs> What's that? One hopes. It <laughs> One hopes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want to pass it during. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, in any case, what, what this meant for our index is that this data is highly compressible, and if you um, design the index correctly, you can take advantage of that okay. compression. Um, however, uh, there are other kinds of words or other kinds of sentences that show up. Uh, obviously, the log format directive will, in, in Apache E specifically, um, log format will let you extend the vocabulary of the binary. Um, there are things like domains of virtual hosts, which are essentially um, placeholders um, for uh, other kinds of um, strings. Uh, there are linked URLs that are within the site. So all of these things will um, also be fairly regular for a particular installation. The strings in the binary are pretty regular for everything, everywhere. Um, and then there are viruses and worms, so if you ever see the, these rows where you're requesting OX, OO, and whatnot. Um, and then type is where people are typing in um, URLs manually and possibly making mistakes. Um, in any case, uh, this gives you a little bit more diversity, but the compression still helps you a lot. Um, I'm going to skip some of this stuff. Uh, there's a quick takeaway for this, which is that um, the <laughs> machine data obeys a very similar power law as a log log um, graph. It obeys a very similar power law to other um, distributions, but it's shifted. Um, hmm. This one's sort of interesting. <coughs> um, if you look, this is a plot of the number of terms that you see against the length of the term. Um, also, you know, not an unusual distribution, but except for notice that you know, you're looking at <coughs> terms that are length 100. So, um, again, sort of shifted to the right um, quite a bit. Like, there are an awful lot of terms that are in the hundreds and multi hundreds. Um, so, the search, what th things that the search engine is not, um, it's not web search. So, if any of you have read, um, anatomy of a hypertext search engine, the Google paper. You probably have seen some components of these things. By the way, I, I worked on, so obviously I come from a web search background. Um, uh, but many of the big, big components of a web search engine don't appear at all in Splunk. They don't have to, um, because um, there are no URLs in the data that, there's no implied URL structure in the data. Um, stemming in particular is not useful or not useful in its traditional form um, because um, uh, essentially computers are not constructing words on the fly. They don't understand gerunds and other things. Um, so one of the interesting components of our search engine is that um, it performs what we call segmentation instead of tokenization. Um, so it's an alternative to indexing every single character, which is extremely expensive um, for, the, uh, for, for the search engine. We, uh, I'll talk a little bit later about the, the challenge of performing both indexing and search on the same box. Right? So that's another thing that's very different from a traditional web search engine to um, what we're doing here. Uh, 
So these are the kinds of segments that we would typically index, and we index them both forwards and backwards, so you can do both type ahead and type behind. So if you type something like, um, I can probably just go ahead and do this. Or can't. <coughs> I suppose I can type. So if I type something like Firefox, or fire, I would get Firefox. Um, I can also do things like search for Star Fox, and I guess <coughs> things that end with F-O. F-O. Yeah, um, you gave uh, up on course, the X. <laughs> of course. Um, maybe I have to hit space or something. Interesting. Um, oh. You typed it too fast. They typed it too fast. Too much coffee. Okay. I guess this is a UI thing. That's impossible. Um, the computer right. had coffee? No, it's not public to Indeed. Did that. Right. Did you die from so much Indeed. cups? Indeed. Um, oh, if you drown it, yes. You can no. die from too much cups of water. There is an RD15. Yeah. There was a kid who died of hazing. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, right yeah. Yeah. I told you water was <laughs> fatal. <laughs> so, the quick sum up on timestamps is that there's there are a lot of timestamps, a lot of different formats. They're, they're, it's hard to write any single regular expression or any single bit of code that kind of understands them all. Um, we spent a huge amount of time, and we now have this really complicated bit of code that both performs and can understand all of these kinds of you know, time formats, ones where you, know, you have two different formats in the same file, or you have weird things like ranges, or um, sometimes, Weird, can, can I force your display system to normalize them all for me? Um, yes, they are They are normalized. Um, okay. So they display them in your time zone, right? Well, I need to be able to choose the time zone. Can I actually choose the time zone format that I want to have it provided? <coughs> I think I mean, sure not can. today. But oh, I would hope I could normalize the GMT, otherwise I'll go insane. UTC. We should, so this, this is actually yeah. a really, really yeah. active conversation. You guys should have been um, off today. Exactly. <laughs> there, was, there, was, there was a yelling match over this. I, okay. I, I've, I've been in the what? Just UTC only. I was just through this yeah. whole time. Yelling. <laughs> but, but then again, I'll propose DM, DLT. Dateline time, ah, because that dateline. way you don't have half the day and the different. You know, the government's got like all these weird time zones too that we have to support. Like, I don't know, gee, they sound like compression yeah. formats. That is so stupid. Yeah. They only exist on small here. islands for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All time Sorry. zones are weird. The question, exactly. my question wasn't about the time zones being weird. My question was about my ability to get that format to come out something I want, like the seventh of April, two thousand five, <coughs> or the first of. August or whatever, so, um, so that maybe I like speak. mail format or something. Indeed. So <coughs> if the idea is to perform an extraction um, and to have a file that you could save, um, I think we don't do that today. Although you could sort of cut and paste from the. What feature do you know? Sure, coming. Yeah. coming soon. We can. Yeah, you should be able to do uh, that. I mean, that's why we. That's why we come to these yeah, things. <laughs> we're here to hear you complain about sure. something. So we it's can all Gregorian time, right? Julie, <laughs> <laughs> Julie. That's that's Indeed. the best comment of the evening. <laughs> it's almost ten o'clock. That's all I know. It's late. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think it, it only ranges clock. from 1910 to 2038. And it's all UTC. It's 32 bit. Oh, so the world's it's, ending. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, the world yeah. ends. Um, and we, we actually do. We use 32 bit time. time. <laughs> Um, whereas I think most OSs are 60, uh, they're long, so they changed to 64. Right. The, the, the original question was, do you normalize to a, uh, in the display subsystem, not in the data, to a settable date format? Um, that was what the, the argument was about today. I think that there are some among us who are very excited about that, and we think it's super important, and there are others who are less excited about it. Um, but we're... Bring okay. this, Most people who are less excited, by the way, have PhDs and pointy hats. And they, yeah, you know, exactly. They don't so think we'll all come over to your building. So, and, uh, so now you have the opportunity uh, to tell them that a room really can go back and talk about it. I wish they would announce they basically fight with you about how, you know, a, a big number is more important. They lose. So here, here's another kind of fun thing. Um, so if you're familiar with side grep and awk and all that kind of stuff, you've probably run into this problem. Um, this is a stack trace. I have never run into that. <laughs> it's actually pieces of many stack traces. Yeah, so it's, um, uh, 
And the truth is, this is one thing, right? Right, because you've got to you've got to follow yeah, the leading so spaces right. logic. Yes. Exactly. So um, one thing that we do with Splunk that's also pretty cool is we um, do what's called event aggregation. So if you have something like um, this really big hundred lines of stack trace, you know, caused by and another hundred lines of stack trace. Um, we aggregate all of those lines into a single event so that when you're doing filtering, like I don't want to see anything that came from the box 192.168.1.1. Um, it filters out the entire event, so you don't have to sort of figure out how to get rid of all those extra log rows. You get five more minutes, but I okay. want Luke uh, to come up and start preparing his machine. Uh, Luke, uh, Luke is a... And um, Matthew, no, we have not forgotten you. You're next. <laughs> nice. Okay. Luke is I'm gonna a, go. Where are you from, Luke? The Reductive Labs. I know that. that, that which Nashville. state? Tennessee. Okay, right. Um, like so Luke around. actually is uh, the creator of Puppet. And so he was just happening to be here in the area. And I figured he, since he's... Here. Let this guy, sorry, sorry, Let this guy finish. Cool. Cool. I just, we introduce the next speaker okay. when he gets to speak. <laughs> sorry. Okay. 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 So we're going to go really fast because if there are two people after me, wow. Um, Don't so, worry, we have the room extra long tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was here one time. It's when, a 64 bit room tonight. Yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> when, when Roddy Pullman stopped it was, we were getting kicked out. Um, so uh, there's a lot of log data. You guys know that. Um, it's surprising how many people don't know how much log data their infrastructures generate. Um, we talk to, we talk to people a lot about this. And, Enough to break machines. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Yes. Things need to be broken. Um, you should see the platters warp when I put in a block. I think that's how I got my first We do a lot of work to make the thing perform. It says things I'm going to just skip ahead. Um, uh, at the end of the day, essentially, there's a new indexing engine coming online for Splunk. It's a lot faster, it uses a lot less overhead, it uses a lot less disk. Um, it lays the foundation for um, uh, even more performance later. Um, I, I'm not going to talk about design background stuff. I think we're coming back in March or something to do a more detailed thing. At least that's what Christine said. Uh, or maybe April or something. Um, uh, the inspirations for these are, you know, the sort of small tight um, libraries like PCRE or Clib. Um, uh, and then just one minute for upcoming cool stuff. Um, so as I said, um, our index files are now 10 times smaller because of this compression stuff I was talking about. Um, the index files are architecture independent, so if you wanted to do something like, for example, run a couple old boxes to, do, to perform your indexing and then so NFS mount a network directory somewhere sure, else, you could do that. Yeah. And they could be different boxes, like you could have a Mac and a Sun and an Opteron or whatever you want. Um, Early next year, this one is really cool. Um, we're um, releasing something which we call paths internally. Um, the idea here is that if you were to look at something like SMTP logs, um, what you'll see is that there will be events that are something like, I'm sending mail to you know, Richard at you know, sun.com. And then there's another event which says, um, uh, mail was received from Michael for Richard. But Richard may not be mentioned. What will be mentioned is the, e the SMTP ID. So if you're searching for mail from Richard to Michael, um, what you probably are going to search for is Richard Michael. right? Um, and what you want to be able to do is to join on that SMTP ID. So that's what, that, that's what pads do. It's uh, really, really slick. Find a new name, please, then? <laughs> hmm? Well, we think of pads as directories. So as it has in path files. files. <laughs> No, well, we call them I mean, whatever, like transactions or something. Yeah. This is clusters of the. Um, well, yes, like more like Correlations, <laughs> like an automated correlation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we use yes. anomaly, correlation, cluster, terminal, I mean, like always. Yakety yak. I mean, yakety yak, new dad. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. I don't know. I'm not a marketing yak is a good term. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, and then finally, we just have a, a couple more performance bumps. Um, some of the code that we've already got in the pipeline was tested to be twice as fast. So, we're excited about that. Anyway, oh, question? Yeah, how much does it cost? Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, okay, so. <laughs> it's free. There's, a yeah, no. There's some, some charge for a portion of the thing. Everything you see in the demo is free. So, so it will be free. There's, 
there's a pay for server which has some features, I think, that are uh, access controls. And some, what you can do is you can take a query, as long, it can be some big long thing, and you can say run this every five minutes and the trajectory results is doing blah, 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 then notify me. Those two things, I think we have a pay for server. It's, you know, not terribly expensive. But the free one's free, go try it, it's always going to be free. So, so is it? How many logs are server? What, how much stuff can I put in the free thing? Um, there's a, there's my answer, then there's a marketing answer. You can put as much as you want in, it starts nagging you. If you get beyond a certain level, it won't stop working. I mean, it, it just eats data until you run out of disk. Yeah. So sooner or later, I have to pay attention. No, I mean, it'll but it. Sooner or later, you gotta pay attention. It seems cool. I just know it's not working. You know, the only reason I'm reluctant to answer this question is just because we launched about a month ago, and internally, we have lots of debates about pricing, packaging. Our commitment is there'll always be a free, if not open source, version of this product in perpetuity. There'll always be the thing.